Luke, the question of life in the cosmos is a perennial human one, and many of us individually have it as well. It's one of the great, the great uh, questions that we all have. Uh, so I want to I put three hats on you and then see what comes out. Uh, first is as a cosmologist. Second, uh, someone who has really focused on fine-tuning, somewhat controversially, perhaps. And the third is uh, you're very open that uh, did you believe in God? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you get the confluence of those three, <laughs> Uh, where do you emerge in terms of life in the cosmos? So let, let me take them in order. As a cosmologist, what we think about the universe is it's awfully big. It's roughly the same everywhere. It's making stars all over the place. Those stars are creating the, the, the basic materials for life. They've been doing that for a couple of billion years. So if life is the sort of thing that will turn up as long as you have a planet covered in chemicals, then life will have turned up elsewhere in the universe. That is a big if though, because that's the question I then have to hand off to a biologist to say, okay, I can give you a planet here. It'll have all sorts of interesting chemicals on it, even uh, organic chemicals, carbon-based chemicals. What will happen? And mm -hmm. that's a very, very difficult question. So as a cosmologist, there's lots of opportunities for life out there. It's a, but life is a very complicated thing. Even a simple cell is a very complicated sure. thing. So how much life is out there in the universe is, unfortunately for me, there's a, there's a big unknown there, which is a shame because I, I give talks to all sorts of astronomical societies and high schools and all this, and no matter what I've talked about, I get the question, <laughs> is there life in the universe? So I, I wish I had a better answer. In terms of fine-tuning, fine-tuning is really about the necessary conditions for life. Because we try and start with the basics of, you know, how much does an electron weigh, the very fundamental mm. laws, we can't, at the moment, start with those and calculate whether life would occur. So unfortunately, I don't think fine tuning answers it one way or another. It's interesting that our universe has these laws which create complexity, and we see the same sorts of laws across the universe. We're not in a little oasis of complexity with chaos all around us. We see the same galaxies and stars everywhere. So again, lots of opportunities, I think, in terms of physics and cosmology, all the opportunities are there for life throughout the universe. It's, it's whether chemistry and biology will take the next step beyond that. And finally, as a theist, I, I, I don't really find much of an opinion there either. Maybe it, it's maybe there's lots of life out there in the universe or maybe not. Uh, that's, that's something I don't particularly have a strong view on. Isn't that um, odd not to have a strong view on that? Uh, because if you believe in God and you believe God created this vast universe that you study as a cosmologist, yeah. strange to me you don't have a, much of an opinion about whether God, which you, who you believe, uh, built this whole universe uh, just for us here in this little part of one galaxy or for untold others as well. So possibly I have, I probably have a slight predilection towards there's there, there are other life out there for other reasons. Uh, but, but a lot of that comes more from, um, you know, C.S. Lewis wrote a wonderful space trilogy where he imagined life in other places in the solar system, which, which was undergoing various stages of sort of its spiritual growth. So part of me thinking there might be life out there is just more imaginative. So C.S. Lewis has a wonderful space trilogy where he, he imagines life throughout the solar system, you know, on Venus and on Mars, which in various stages of its sort of spiritual life. Uh, and that, you know, appeals to me, but that's, that's more of an emotional uh, you know, appeal. I, I kind of like that idea. I, I think you're right that it would be odd to create such a big universe with so many opportunities for life without like, taking advantage of those. Uh, but, but again, when I, when I think that I can understand fine-tuning from a theistic perspective, it's when you try to understand how a person behaves, you understand their motivations. And so it, it would be good for this thing to happen is one reason why you might think God might do something. And, I, and in those terms, it, it, I suppose it would be good if life existed elsewhere in the universe. Uh, on the other hand, uh, maybe uh, God wants to show the... the uh absolute uh, puniness of human beings yes. and absolute uniqueness at the same time. And so maybe we're alone. Yeah, I mean, the other sort of flip side of the, the coin here is there's, 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 there is evil and suffering. And so creating life everywhere, <laughs> might, might, you might end up creating one where there's not the right balance between good and, good and, and evil and 
between the, the good things in life and the, the suffering aspects of life. Let, let me tell you how I sort of think about uh, this thing uh, of life in the cosmos and uh, from a theistic or atheistic point of view. So there are two possibilities, logically. Either there is life outside of Earth, and intelligent life, or, or there's not. I mean, there's no other possibility. So if there isn't, some theists would say, see, that makes a, a, a human special and that proves that God exists, that there could be all this life and there isn't. The atheist would say, see, there is no God because life is so fluky that it could only happen here and it's ridiculous that God created this universe. If there is life outside of Earth, of course, you'd have exactly the opposite with both theists and atheists claiming this as proof of their position, where the theist would say, see, the universe is full with life because God created the universe to have all sorts of life. And, and, if, and, and the atheist would say, see, humans are not at all unique. It's just the, the way the universe works. So I don't see, uh, that's a very interesting dichotomy. I like that a lot. <laughs> I, I don't see from a theistic point of view that there has to be anything unique about human beings as we know it. So there could easily be life they wouldn't in any way cut back on human specialness, I don't think. Uh, so the way I think of it is it, we, we, we still, the important thing about life here is that it's moral qual qualities. So we are beings who can interact with each other in moral ways, who can appreciate good things and appreciate beauty. And all of those are still there, even if there's life elsewhere in the universe. So if, if that is, the sort of special thing about us, the, the fact that there's people somewhere else doesn't in any way take away that specialness. So I, th I, th I still think, so, sort of funnily enough, the theist is kind of agnostic about whether there's life elsewhere in the universe because the way I approach sort of fine tuning and why that points towards theism for me is that the universe has this property that it, it has beings who can appreciate good things and do good things and take responsibility.